How you doing? I'm going to show you how we're at on this crazy 372 reed saw build that we're doing with a removable head. Uh, we've got the combustion chamber pocketed. We have that polished. We still have some machine work to do as soon as we have the, uh, the gasket made. We still got to set our squish. But I'd like to talk to you just a little bit about some of the concepts, which is really kind of way cool. Isn't that kind of neat? Yeah, I thought so too. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to lap this surface with this outer ring surface where it seals. And uh, I'm going to do that with a uh, valve graining compound. Uh... Uh, quite honestly, I think it's the right thing to do because what it's going to allow me to do, guys, is have metal-to-metal -metal contact right here with the head, absolute. And then I'm going to be able to use, initially anyway, we may O-ring this. You guys had good ideas there. I thought about it, too. We can use a metal O-ring, too, uh, believe it or not. But I think on this particular head, I'm not going to. What I'm going to do instead... Uh, this is a prototype. This is just to get it to the concept. Uh, oh, yeah, this will run. I'll guarantee you that. But there's much work to be done with this yet. When that we get our studs built, obviously we gotta, uh, we got to turn about an inch of that off to M5 and thread it. And the shoulder of that will set right up here on this boss with a, a fairly nice little washer. Now, what we're going to do when we put this saw together is we'll put the stud in. We'll double knot, put the stud in. We'll bolt the cylinder on. I'm using no base gasket. I'm going to tell you why. Uh... I kind of, in my own right, know where I want to be with this. Uh, obviously, it's going to fire in a dead center instead of in an angle, okay? That changes how my transfers work, okay? Now, you know that it's ideal to fire your transfer. You want, you want the fuel and air going toward the intake side which is this side, okay? And you want that to hit right about right there with the angle plug. With a straight plug, that changes. That whole thing changes. Um, I'm not going to give you the exact numbers, exact of what I'm doing here, because we're not sure what we want to uh, uh, try to accomplish out of this. We know it's going to be an RPM solve. That's one thing we know. But we also know it takes a lot to make one of these live. We're going to be putting a lot of pressure on the bearings. So we are going to be using uh, ceramic bearings. You know, they're a hybrid, you know, because you'll, you'll get gains out of that. Now, I'm very worried about bearing failure, even with that. If we start pushing major horsepower out of this, we can get as much out of a two-stroke uh is we want in a chainsaw. Just just believe what I'm telling you. But this is where it gets confusing. We're using a forged piston coming from chainsaw conservation components. It's a white scope. Like that. Yes, sir. You do have to have a slight more clearance with these. Uh, which you, you can clearance the piston. It's not a problem. We're probably going to cut some of the skirt off on the intake and exhaust. We're going to get a little lighter. Uh, this piston is already much lighter than uh, OEM. But we want to go lighter yet. Because as that RPM increases, them pounds turn into tons. I mean, it's a massive amount of pressure on your bearings. Now, what we're going to do is put on each side of the exhaust 
not in the center, but on each side of the exhaust, a little hole in the piston here and here. We're going to do something very similar on the intake, slightly different, because it's got a different set of problems. Now, using the reed for the intake controls our intake timing, so we're not limited to that 160 that I, uh, degrees opening time that I normally have. It, uh, call it in the house. Hey, how's your day, bud? A lot of duct tape and bubble gum, but I got her. <laughs> That's what I did wrong. I didn't use any bubble gum today. Well, there you go. I'll give you some ideas, huh? I, I used duct tape, though. <laughs> I did. Okay, so we know that. Okay, so what them holes are going to do is oil will and fuel comes up the bottom of the uh, piston and a little bit of bleed out them holes in four points around the piston. That will have a slight cooling effect, but it'll have lubricant where we need it so we don't stick this, because that can happen. Okay, let's talk about the bearings. Here's where it gets real interesting. Uh, I don't know if you ever see this stuff on Chainsaw Channels, but I'm going to show you anyway. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. And when, we're going to show you something way cool. Uh, and I'm going to explain it. One problem with crankshafts is they're not concentric always. Okay? They'll, they'll be a little bit of a wobble. So, I can't do it on this table. It's not straight enough. We're going to put a piece of plate down. Use V-blocks. And we're going to put them right where the uh, bearing journals go. We're going to put a dial indicator on each side. Okay? And we're going to spin that crank. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you how to manipulate these cranks. In fact, I can tell that one wants to back up real bad. Uh, it's probably not very accurate. But this is, uh, this is kind of a bad crank in its own right. Yeah, I could run it. Uh, this one is not for a husky, if you guys notice, that's for a steel, see that stop? Uh, but it's just for an example. So what we're going to do is show you how to true these. So when you have a dial indicator on each side, and you'll see that wobble, well, what you'll actually do is you'll tap that crank around and keep checking it till you get that absolutely true. Now, I'll tell you something else we probably will do is on the leading edges right in here we're going to put a bit of a chamfer just on the leading edge I know we haven't got back to that internal supercharger thing but this is going down that same direction it'll help blow air fuel mixture up to transfers okay this is what it's going to do okay so that's going to be fun isn't it we're going to flow the cases. I think those of you that seen on the junkyard dog, uh, while we got this apart, we're going to be going from here to here with JB Weld. And we're going to form this in a radius. We're going to match our cylinder in this gasket area with our case banging around. When you do that, it's an uninterrupt, uninterrupted flow. It's, it's going to be way good. It's, it's just, believe me, it's the right thing to do. Um, now, in this head, let me put this cylinder back on. I'm going to have this part a dozen times, ain't I? But we don't care. This is the fun stuff. Okay. This is the way cool. I'm going to like it. Obviously, center plug. I have done my measurements. I can put, you know, we're doing two decompressors in the head. I can put one right here. and go right over here and put another one. Right side by side, kind of. I'll tell you why I want to do that. Colin got messing around. And he found me this little tiny pressure gauge. Yeah, that reads 300 pounds. We're, we're going to get right up there pretty good in pressure. Uh, as much as we can 
uh, contain, uh, quite honestly. But I think what I'd like to do is right here, mount that uh, gauge. So I might put just a short tube on that in this head just for one reason. So I can monitor changes in my compression as the saw is running. And I've always wanted to do this. You know, you can do a static uh, compression test, but you can't tell when it's running. Um, I think we need a little short tube, quite honestly, because I think we're going to end up with some heat coming out. It'll be just a little hole uh, going into the head in the decomps plus this little gauge. And neat little switch. I showed you that on the last video. Yeah, race car stop. That's on. What it allow us to do is mount this in such a way that if you, your hand's going to be right on the operator handle, be right next to it, if you got any kind of crazy things, you can hang a reed. I'm going to tell you right now, if you hang a reed, you can have a runaway because it'll actually suck the butterfly open in some cases. I've had bikes do it. I don't know if saws can, but it might. I want to be able to shut it off right now. I don't want to fumble around for a switch. So that's kind of neat. I wasn't going to make a very long video. I was going to make a short video of this, but I get to yakking and I can't shut up because I get so excited at what we're doing. Now, we're going to send this saw to Buck and Billy. It's what we're going to do once we proof it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of work. This is what we accomplished this weekend. Weekends are my time. Uh, I was out here for, what, four hours Saturday? Yeah. Colin was putting his buggy together. He got some new stuff. We'll have to show that to you. He got a little UTV. Yeah, got a little Can-Am 1000 Commander. Uh, pretty cool buggy. Now, I had somebody ask me in an email, well, why you're putting all this work into a 372. Why don't you use a big saw? So you really notice your gains. Well, it frightened the heck out of me to think about it. It did. But I thought about it. Now up here in the corner, way up there, you'll see two or three uh, 394s. Well, you know what? I got some good 394 cylinders. I'm not going to cut one of them. What I'm looking for, guys, is a 395. I'd really, really like a 395 because I'll tell you what we got. Yeah, a bigger reed cage. Yes. Bigger than this one. Yes. Isn't that interesting? And we have four pedals, carbon fiber, rather than just two. Now, the length of that, from the measurements that I figured out, I am going to be able to build just a short little plate and mount my carburetor directly on that. I want that carburetor as close to the reeds as possible on both of these saws. You dirt bike guys that build bikes in snowmobiles, you understand why, don't you? Start them carburetors right up, let her go. They'll rip, I'm going to tell you, they will. So, we had to go with a proper piston. Okay, here we go. Yep, that's for a 394, 395. It's a window. We're going to do the same thing. We'll get the skirts, uh, skirt shorter, bigger cage. We're going to go to the big saw. Okay, you got me convinced, and we're going to do it. But first, you got to walk where you're on. We're going to do it on a little saw. We'll let Buck and try that out. I think he'll like it. I'm going to try it out first, though. I'm going to run in a bunch. I hope these little videos like this, uh, they're a nice little distraction from my daily uh, uh, work that we do here. Uh, what? I've got two more saws ready to run and put out. We're going to run them, one of them tomorrow. Well, actually, we're going to run two. Uh, 
And uh, in the last video, I showed you the chisel filing, one thing, another. I can't believe there was one guy, and I know it wasn't one of my subscribers, jumped in in the comments, totally missed the idea of the glasses. Why I mark with a Sharpie where I started. Yeah, wait till you get my age and you got bad eyes. You got to need every advantage you can get. The guy had the audacity to say, well, you obviously don't know how to sharpen sauce. That of your plane. Well, did you miss the freaking glasses concept? Why you can't see when you get old? You know, sometimes you're better off not being able to see as much. I swear to God you are. You really are. But. So, this is the fun part of the stuff here. I'll be showing a little bit of this. Not much on the saw bills we're doing. Um, we will have a really cool uh, video in a, in a few days. In a few days. Uh, we're going to go cut trees, load up some logs on log trucks. Uh, I'll get a lot of footage tomorrow. And it takes a few days to put it all together. I might try to whip something up so you at least get a taste of where we're at. Okay, guys. Thanks so much for stopping in. Goodbye.